critical part of well-rounded strength because you gain both strength and balance simultaneously. So let's get to work on it. Hike your legs up right here and start counting every time you have to touch your foot down to maintain your balance. My daughter, Zanna, did a kinesiology degree at university. And doing that degree, I realized that when you do work like this, you can actually make your workout shorter if you're doing quality work. That's right. You, you become more efficient in your strength training. You train smarter, not necessarily longer. So you got to know that this gets tons easier with practice. This is exposure. So I want you to just try this. And I know in the beginning you're rocking all over the place. <laughs> but you get so much, it's a steep learning curve, but it's a fast learning curve. Now, see if you can go from this bent leg position to an L sit, so you're gonna move your feet forward and you kinda have to hang your butt off the edge of the ball, so you actually change your center of gravity. All your muscles are firing here, your core muscles are working hard, and your neuromuscular process, your brain is working hard. Balance without strength or strength without balance are lacking. We want you to get both. Can you go back to that bent leg position? <laughs> Ooh, harder than it looks. <laughs> you need to know that you're hot wired for balance. You learn to walk, you learn to ride a bicycle, you will get this too. Don't be too hard on yourself. For all of this work, you just wrestle with the balance. You don't have to be perfect. The wrestling with it is good for you. The process brings you the benefits. Okay, let's get down on the floor and use these core muscles as stabilizers. First thing I want you to do is just get down on all fours like this and find your neutral spine. If you'll round your low back way up like a cat, that's spinal flexion. And now slouch down like a, an old gray mare, that's spinal extension. Neither of those do we want. Find the comfortable place in between that we call neutral. So your neutral spine should just feel comfortable and your neck is in neutral. Try not to do this. Try not to lift your head up. Turn yourself sideways to the television rather than hiking your neck up into extension. Keep your hands right there. Now, just put your hands out a little bit and bring your hips forward. So you're rocking forward. Now just rock back and bring those hips forward again. In this position, your trunk muscles are working. Your core muscles are stabilizing. Back again and forward again. So we're just practicing this movement pattern. So you have almost a straight line here at your hips. Okay, now for some people, this will be enough exercise for this position today. If you can't do this on the ball, always fall back to this position because your core muscles are working. But to make it more difficult, I'm gonna have a renegade ball. <laughs> Roll out, it's the same movement that we just did on the floor. Roll out, bring those hips forward. And now you have a little bit of balance issue here on the ball. Your core muscles are working so hard to stabilize here. Just hold this unless you want more challenge. Greater challenge, you make a longer plank. So up on your toes, careful that you don't arch your back here. Your back absolutely needs to stay in neutral. And then for even more challenge, you can lift or just unweight one leg. Think about unweighting that leg more than lifting it, because if you lift it too much, you'll arch your spine. The weight-bearing leg is not locked. The leg on the floor has got a soft little bend in the knee. And back down to your knees to rest. Oh, 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 oh means 
hard work for the core. You can feel that, hey? Oh, yeah. Those stabilizers just firing like crazy. All those trunk muscles. Go out onto that plank again and raise the other foot just to make sure it works on the other side. So look here, hips come forward. Hold this if this is as hard as you want today. Up on the toes, harder yet. And the most difficult of all, unweight one leg. And see how my hands are rocking around here on the ball? Can't help that. <laughs> no, it's the process of wrestling with this darn balance issue that brings you the benefits. Okay, tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Rest <laughs> on your knees. Oh, I don't know that I ever sense my core muscles working harder than when we do that. And just two legs on the ground is plenty, so. Absolutely. If that's enough, don't even worry about one leg. I agree, I agree. This, hey, this is a workout you can grow into. This can take you a year, that's fine. Okay, roll over. Now, using our trunk muscles, particularly our belly muscles, as prime movers, here they're going, those muscles are going to move your spine, move your bones, rather than just stabilize and produce rigidity. So Zan, take us through curls. Okay, the first thing you need to do is find your scapula, your shoulder blades on your back. Find the lowest corner of those shoulder blades. That's what you're gonna put on the ball. So you roll down just until you feel that angle, that bony angle of your shoulder blades resting on the ball. You can put a couple of fingers behind your head just to support your neck, but they're not gonna help you lift up. From there, you just lift off the ball just so that those shoulder blades come off the ball and back down till they're on. So it's a tiny little range of motion just from here to here, but it works. We go up and down and up and down, up. So what you do with your eyes, I would say, is look at about um, up, down. Look at about shoulder height across the room. Not at the ceiling, but also not at your belly. Up, down, up, and you're just coming down to those shoulder blades, so you're never really resting. Let's do a couple more. And last one, okay. Roll Let up, take a little break. I always feel it shaking when I'm rolling up. That's because you're not only doing core, but you're working on the little stabilizing muscles rather than just your abdominals like you do on the ground. So this is a good thing. Shaking is a good thing. Shaking <laughs> is a good thing. It doesn't mean you're weak. No, it, it means, means you're working. Exactly. So okay. we'll do the same, from the same position, you can also work your oblique muscles on the side. So roll down again. On the side of your trunk, that is. Find your shoulder blades on the ball. And this time, just lift one side, one shoulder blade off at a time. And back down to center. Try the other side. And back down. Let's do some together. Ready? We go. Side, center, side, center, side, center, side, center. So the important side, thing for center, these is that side, you keep center, your arms side, flat center, out. So you don't want to do this. Center. You don't want to bring your elbow up. Center. Side. It's just center, your chest. Side, just that shoulder blade center, comes off the ball. Side. Center. Side. A few center, more. Side. Two more. And we're done. Okay. Ooh. Felt them shaking. <laughs> this is the famous tuck. Using, again, your trunk muscles as stabilizers. Have a look. You're going to roll out over the ball and be careful. Oops. Right here, first danger point. Look what's happened to my back. Just as my hip bones come off the ball, you're very tempted to arch your back. No, 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 no. Use your trunk muscles, your belly muscles, to hold that back in neutral, that, that low back. Not this but this, and roll right on out till your socks, your shoelaces are on the ball, your feet a little bit apart, and then your thighs 
tuck up toward your chest and back out. Now that's what I'd like to see ideally. If that's too hard for you right now, you can let your knees come down to the floor. That's a much easier tuck. Okay, roll out here and let's try some together. Tell me when you're there. I'm ready. Ready? We go. Tuck, up, roll out, stop in neutral. Tuck, up, right here, put your back in neutral. Up and up, here, don't arch your back. It's tuck, the tuck, up. that's the hard part. It's the extending out that's hard. That's right, stopping in neutral, right there. Last one, right here, go up and stop right here in neutral. All right, dismount. Keep your back in neutral. Keep your body flat like a plank. Keep your body in contact with the ball and hand over hand, just roll back. Can we just try that again? That dismount is an exercise in and of itself. Roll out over your ball. Here, careful, careful right here. Keep your back in neutral as your hip bones leave the ball. You roll out. Now, a common error is when people start to roll back, they pike the hips up. That's going to make you fall off the ball. Keep your body flat and your low back in absolute neutral, and you just smooth as silk. Dismount. Xana has a harder version of this. It's called the pike. So if the tuck was too easy, you want to try something a little bit more challenging. You're going to do the same position. Instead of bringing your knees in bent, you're going to bring them straight legs. So I'll demonstrate. Roll out the same way for the tuck. But here, instead of bringing your knees in, you're going to pike your legs up straight and back down. Good. One more time. Toes come up on the ball and back down. And what I'm thinking is we'll do a combination. We'll do tuck, pike. We'll alternate. We'll get out there, do tuck, pike. If the pike is too much for you right now, don't worry about it. Just do all tucks. You gotta customize this to your level of current fitness and have Pikes faith. Are when you're bored of the tuck. <laughs> <laughs> have faith. It's gonna get so much easier with time. This is like riding a bike. Ready? Tuck. Knees come up, back in neutral here. Now pike. And butt comes up, back down to neutral. Tuck and neutral spine here. Pike, neutral spine again. Ooh, Tuck. I feel those already. Yep. Now just keep your face toward the floor. Don't hike your neck up, hyperextend your neck. One more set, let's go. Tuck, in and in. Last and pike. pike, up and up. And neutral spine, dismount. Good job. Hey, you know, you fell off your bike a time or two. And as a toddler learning to walk, you had to practice it. So don't be hard on yourself if, this, uh, if, this, if you're rolling all over the room for the first few months. That's how my classes are. We roll all over the place. In a short time, they're getting very proficient at this balance issue. Let's rest those muscles and work a little bit on balance here. You're gonna come down with palms on the floor and then lift one leg at a time. Now look, I'm just lifting that leg to the end of range of motion for these glutes. Because if I lift it higher, I've gotta arch my low back. I don't want that. I just want it to the end of range of motion for these glutes. You got both palms on the, on the floor? All right. How about lifting the opposing arm? So this is a balance issue. Center your thoughts here. You get to put your weight-bearing arm and leg wherever you want them. <laughs> and put that hand down and let that leg come down. Well, let's see if you're as good on the other side. Lift the other leg. All right, center your thoughts. Get a focus on the floor. 
Lift the opposing arm. One side is always better than the other. Yes. And also, there's a little exposure issue. Sometimes you're just better on the second side because your brain knows what's expected. Hand comes down, foot comes down. Okay, let's do that again. The other leg up, and it's opposing arm. I think you get extra points when you almost lose balance and you recover. That is the hardest of all, and for that you should be richly rewarded. Hand comes down, foot comes down. Other leg, up just to the end of the range of motion for your glutes, lift one hand. Are you there? And there. Okay, now go back to the other side. Lift that leg and that arm. And we can further challenge your balance by pumping these limbs down and up. We go down and down and up and up. Down, down. Remember, you don't have to be perfect. Just wrestle with the task. And up and up, down, Wobbling down, around is okay. up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, and stop. Okay, let's try the other side and we'll do the same number, other side. Lift that leg and the opposing arm. Are you steady? Okay, we go down and down and up and up, down and down, up. So this limb movement is just a challenge to your balance. And that's going, even just trying is going to make you better. Last one, down and down and up and up, down and stop. Let's do more tucks and pikes. Gee, I like that combination. And remember, if you don't like the pike right now, just tuck, it's plenty of work. In fact, just this roll out, using your belly muscles to keep your back in neutral here is exercise, is good core strength work. Okay. First tuck, here she comes. In and out, stop in neutral. Pike and down, stop in neutral. Legs come in, extended in neutral. Up and out. Legs come in, extend. Up and out. Two more steps. Okay. These are so hard in the beginning. And it's just so fun Last to tuck. see how easy they get fast. Last pike. And stop in neutral, roll back to dismount. You're getting that dismount now. Okay, we're gonna do balance one more time. Try this. Same position as before. Now you're gonna have to roll a little more forward because you're gonna lift both legs. Again, just using the glutes and your buttocks. But you do have to move your center of gravity forward a bit because here you're going to lose one arm. So really focus your eyes on that weight-bearing hand. You're allowed to spread your digits apart. That's fair. And now you really have to center and wrestle with the balance. Oh my goodness, put that hand down and see if you can switch. This is it. Lift that one arm so you're balanced on one limb. Great work. Hang here just a sec. Just find your focus and let that arm down. All right. Exposure, exposure, exposure. It just takes practice. Let's stand up. We're gonna do a, a one leg lunge using the ball, and you'll have to wrestle with this ball. Balance will be an issue, Zen. You wanna take this? 
To do this lunge, you're going to put one shin on your ball and get the ball sort of behind you. What you're going to do is reach back with that leg and go down into a lunge so that this shin is almost vertical Great. and back up. Now, sometimes folks don't distinguish between bending at the waist and bending at the hips. This bend is from the hips. So what you don't want to see is this, crumpled over. Keeping a flat back. Yeah you, want, yeah, you keep a flat back and your trunk as erect as possible. So the bend comes from here. Let's try a couple slow first. Put your hands out to counterbalance. We'll count slow. And it's down, two, three, four, up, two, three. Another one slow, down, two, three, four, up, two. Let's try it a little faster. Down and up. And down and up. And down and up. And out and up. Keep your head up, your trunk as erect as possible, and down and up, and down, down and up, down, last one, down and up. Ooh. Good work. Okay. Now, switch over, and we're going to stretch those very quadriceps that we squatted on. And they're feeling it <laughs> right here. <laughs> it's a big muscle group right down the front of your leg. I think this stretch is best when the ball is well behind you. You got a pelvic tilt so that you're not back like this. You don't want this bend in your hips here. You want this position now. Press your shin against the ball. You're actually putting pressure on the ball. That's what really engages this stretch. If you want to stretch your glutes as well, because they were working. You bet they were working. Roll your ball around, just cross your leg over. Just use the ball to lean on. So that's these glutes in your, your bent leg. <laughs> well, you feel it, you know where it is. There's no doubt about where they are. Now this one is, this is a difficult move regards balance. Uh, not to mention the raw strength that you develop in the leg that's weight bearing. So, if you have to hold on to the sofa now and then, no problem. Just don't let it become a chronic crunch, crutch. You ready? Try the other side. Couple slow. Slow to start, ready, we go. Down, two, Three, four, up, two. Find a three. spot in the wall or something in the carpet to look at. That's it. Focus. That'll really help. Okay. Take it a little faster. Down and up. Down and up. Out and out. In, in, out, out. In, Make in, sure that you're reaching out, far out, back with that back in, leg in, so that your out, front shin is out, almost in, vertical. In, out, out. Keep going. Keep your more. eye on your center. Focus your mind. One more, one more. Out, out, in, in. Oh, good work. Let's stretch that leg. Switch the ball under the other leg. The ball to stretch needs to this set of quads. Muscle group. Big muscle group. Ball needs to be well behind you. Now pelvic tilt. Bring this part of you forward. Press down on the ball. Can you feel that in the front there? I can. Man, I can really feel that. And then the glutes. The glutes that took you into those squats. This is the one that feels the best to me. It's very specific, isn't it? And you can really milk this by really sinking down onto Sink down. that buttock and you really feel, it's those ones over there. <laughs> okay, we want to do some upper body work, but we need a piece of real estate at your wall. So move your Picasso and we'll meet you at the wall.
To do tricep push-up, put your ball on the wall at about shoulder height, palms on the ball, digits apart. Your arms are straight. The farther you stand away from the ball, the harder it will be. Then, keeping your back and your neck in neutral, you just lean in toward the ball, making sure that your elbows go straight down, not out. When they're straight down, they challenge the tricep muscles to a greater extent, you know, those muscles on the back of your arms. This is what you don't want to see. A lot of work going on here. You don't want to arch your back and poke your chin forward, this sort of thing. So this part of you is like a plank of wood and you're using these core muscles to keep that rigid, okay? Let's try it. We go in and in and out. Keep your neck in neutral, elbows point to the floor. Couple more with both hands on the ball. You'll Last know one. If your neck isn't in neutral, if your chin is touching first, that's so right. Just, Stop you know. here. That's right. I, yes. <laughs> It'll be your nose, I guess, that touches if anything does. We're going to keep going, but you might want to try just one hand now. It's going to be a bigger challenge. One hand or double hand, your choice. Ready? Go. In and in and out and two and in. So can you feel that in the back of your arms? Oh, I sure can. My friends, it is such a specific workload to those tricep muscles. And towards the end, you're going to want to start arching your back because you're working your core muscles as well. And you're way better just to stop and rest. Please don't corrupt your exercise technique. Just stop. Last one. Yes. <sighs> right <Switch> here. here. <laughs> and here. And here. OK. Ready? We go. In and in and out. It's on the out that I really feel my belly muscles contracting because you're tempted to press out with your butt first. Mm -hmm. And the ball's gonna wobble around a bit. And that's why you bought the ball. <laughs> Remember, the instability of the ball is a good thing. It makes you work with balance. That's your benefit. Last one. Whoa, and out. All right, we're moving down. We're gonna hit the glutes again. Just lower that ball on the wall and put it right above your knee. So your knee, your leg is holding the ball against the wall. Now you're going to bend that leg that's touching the ball. Then with your butt well back, you're gonna sit well back. You don't just sit down, you sit back. Hands come out to counterbalance. You're gonna do a squat. So that's what you want. This is not what you want. You don't wanna squat down this way. Your butt is way back there. This shin is almost vertical. You bend at the hips, not at the waist. So this part of you, your trunk, stays as erect as possible. You wanna try a test shot? Put your hands out and go down. Down, down, up, up. Do you need to readjust? Okay, we're gonna aim for 10. Just do as many as you can. We go. Down and down and up. By holding this ball to the wall, it makes it a different kind of squat. It's working a specific muscle, your gluteus medius muscle. And that is a very important muscle. As soon as you let that ball go, if the ball falls to the floor, you know you stopped working that muscle. That's right. Hang on, now you're getting tired. Rest if you have to, don't corrupt your technique. One, One more. more, yikes. <laughs> and up. Well, let me show you how important this glute med is. The gluteus medius holds your hips level. When you're walking, there's a moment where you're on one foot, right? When one leg is coming through. Well, if your gluteus medius were weak or injured, that hip would drop down. 
So that muscle is very important to keep that hip up. You see then it, the critical nature of a strong gluteal, gluteus medius in walking or running. Okay, other side. Got your ball in position. Got your leg bent at the knee. Let's take a test shot, arms out. We go down and down, up and up. Do you need to readjust? Here we go, 10 times. Down, down, up, up. Keep your trunk as erect as possible. Find something to focus your eye on and hold that ball against the wall. Okay, halfway. Now you get tired, maybe. Don't be afraid to miss one rep out. Catch us up. Preserve good, clean, correct technique. Last one, last one. Yikes. Whoa, do you ever feel that glue working? Okay, push-ups. Now these are regular old army push-ups. You can put your hands anywhere you want. Shoulder width apart, or even wider, would be good. Starting from your knees, just move your hips forward so that you're in a straight plank. Your hips aren't bent. Straight, straight line with your upper body. And then you're just gonna bend your arms down towards the ball, and your elbows go straight out on these ones. So your chest should hit the ball first, not your chin. Okay, ready? We go in and in and out and out. There's two. So bring your hips along. Don't leave your hips out there. Look, this is what I mean. This is what you sometimes see. You sometimes just see this. Oh yes, my hips, my butt's just gonna stay out there. No, no. Bring it in and in and in, out and out, in, come on, crank out one more, rest one, and, and out, oh, take a rest, and while you're resting, let's just stretch those muscles, if you clasp your hands here, and then without leaning forward, just lift those hands as far as comfortable for you. Everyone is a little different here. Don't arch your back. Don't bend forward. Just enjoy that stretch. This is not what we want. Depress your shoulders and lift and hold. Now we can make those push-ups more challenging. That's an easy fix. Do five more, and if you want, do them from your feet. Ready? Yep. Any guidelines here? From your feet, it's gonna be even harder to keep a straight plank. You're gonna to wanna to do this. If you're doing that, just go back, do them on your knees again. Good idea. Either way, it's good work. Always take the simpler version if you can preserve better technique. We go down, down, up, up, to and down. Mind your lumbar spine. Keep your back in neutral. How many? One more. Yikes! One more. One more. And up. Knees down to rest. Ooh. Good work. Let's do a pec stretch like this. If you put one hand on the wall, one hand on the ball, bend at the hips, look down at the floor. Now there's a really nice stretch going on here in your shoulder girdle, right across the front of that side of your chest, the pecs. Having the ball really makes a difference. It doesn't stretch quite as good on the wall no, side. No, it doesn't. The ball side is better. So we'll switch and give the other arm fair time. There you go. So bend here at the hips. You're just looking at the floor. This is, this is a version of a stretch that you sometimes see people do in the doorway to stretch uh, shoulder girdle. All right, team, good work. 
Now you promise me that you're not gonna be hard on yourself if you're wobbling all over the place. It's the battle that you wage. It's the process of wrestling with the balance that really brings you benefits. So hang in there. For well-rounded fitness, you need a ball. Zana and I are going to take you through some strength and balance maneuvers using this ball. Just spread your feet apart, lean out on the ball with a flat back. Okay, then we just roll side to side. We go side, center, side, center, just to put some mobility in your hip joints. And side, center, side, center. Now, you know, a lot of the work that we're gonna do on the ball makes you use both balance and strength. So you gain benefits in balance and strength simultaneously. Sometimes the balance is an issue in the beginning, so just struggle with it. It's the process of struggling with the balance that brings you these benefits. You don't have to be perfect at it to get some results from it. And stay center. Just come down on your seat. We're gonna play feet ball here. Let me show you the exercise without the ball. My spine here is in neutral. That's neutral for me. It's comfortable. It's neither flexion, where I'm pressing my low back into the floor, nor arching, when I'm taking my low back off the floor. Neutral is the comfortable middle ground where you still have your lumbar curve intact. Now, I'm going to bring up one leg, thigh vertical, shin horizontal. Contract your belly muscles as you bring up the second leg in the same position. And so the exercise is a challenge to these belly muscles to keep this architecture intact. That is not to arch your back. So I'm going to, with my legs, extend them out and bring them back. Try it with me. Out, out, in, in. Now, if you're arching your back when you take those legs out, I don't want that. You'll need to take them up higher, which is easier, and back in. So out, out, in, in. And let me show you what you cheat with. This tends to happen as you get tired because this is much easier for your abs than this position. So use this as your start position, not this. Okay, if you can do that with no trouble, try adding the ball and see how you do. Now, your levers are gonna be heavier as well. You have to use your inside thigh muscles to squeeze the ball. So here we go, it's the same movement with the legs. We go out and out and in and in. That's it. And though the legs are moving, oh boy, the real work is in your abdominal muscles, which are holding your pelvis and spine just as you started. And in, out, out. If you get real tired, just stop and take a rest. Last one, out and out and in, stop there. Now don't drop the ball, hold it, hold it with your feet. Can you roll on your side? Make yourself long, because the longer your lever out there on the floor, the more stable you will be, and just lift up and down. So now, the inside thigh muscles of the bottom leg, the adductors are working. Let's try and stay on your side. You with me? I'm with you. And down, up, down, up, down. Feeling tired? Hang on, last one. Up and now. Oops, don't drop the ball. Stay right there. Hang on to the ball. Whip around on the other side and make yourself long. Legs are straight. Lift up, down, up, down. Just do as many as you can. And if your muscles really fatigue, miss out a few reps and join us back. 
and down. Up, down, up, down. Last one. And done. Okay, now let's try your glutes. Let's do some work on those. This is called the frog. You just lean out over your ball, and here you get to do some bracing. Look at my elbows. I have palms on the floor, digits spread apart, and I get to use my elbows on the ball, so I brace it. Get your center of gravity forward enough that you can lift both legs off the floor. Now you're not arching your back, you're just using your gluteal muscles in your buttocks to lift. And we just go up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So that's glute work. And down, up, and down, up, and up. So balance is not too bad here, huh? Last one, last one. Okay, now the good news is half of them are done. Recross your ankles the other way and go again. Up, down, up, down, up, and down, up. Hang on. You're allowed to take rests, you know, using those glutes. It's called hip extension. Last one, up and down. All right, roll back on your knees. So that's the frog. Now let's move on and challenge these abdominal muscles again as stabilizers. So they hold you stable, rigid, and with your back in neutral. Neutral back is where you're always safest. Come down in all fours. Negotiate the range of motion in your spine again. Here's flexion. Come with me down to extension and find neutral. So flexion, back to extension, show me neutral. Let's practice this movement pattern. Your hands come out and now you rock forward so that your hips are forward. Leave your hands right there, rock back, rock forward. Again, rock back, rock forward and stay there. For now, that might be as much work as you want to do. Because here, your abdominal muscles are working. But I'd like you to get to the point where you can do that same prone plank on the ball. So rock forward from your knees for more challenge from your toes. Use your abdominal muscles to keep your trunk in neutral. Look what happens, unweight one leg. And now, if you can, lift up, down, up, down. Small range of motion here. Balance a really big issue as you try and stay steady on the ball. Just that little bit of movement. Yeah. Makes it's it a lot harder to balance. Last one, kneel down. It doesn't take much, does it, to really challenge your balance. Don't be upset if you wobble around. I'm wobbling too. Or if okay. you just stay on both feet. Sure, yeah, maybe if you've just started this, lots of people won't go to the one leg for a while. You're gonna grow with this workout. Roll forward again on your ball. If you can go up to the toes, fine. If you can't, stay right there. The weight-bearing knee is not locked. There's a little bend in it. Lift one leg, pump up, down, up, down. You keep your neck in neutral, so you're looking at the ball, and just, just struggle through the balance. And up, down. Last one, up and down, and knees to rest. Those get really hard towards the last two. They do. And you're, you know, you're, you're better off to just take a few rests, just miss out a few repetitions and catch us back up rather than to corrupt your technique and do it poorly. Okay, a side plank. This is the easier the closer you get the ball to you. You're gonna stack your legs and then just roll out. Well, look here, it's hardly any work at all because I'm resting on the ball. So for more challenge,
start with the ball out a little further. This hand is on the ball to help balance and maneuver. And then you just extend out into a sideline plank and back. You wanna take a test? I do a slow one with me. Out you go and you try and balance and then sit back down. Ready to time. Out and in and out and in. Here's three and in. Out and in. I think this is halfway and so you're gonna get tired here. Give yourself permission to take a rest. Please don't corrupt your technique. Here comes, last one. Out and in. Okay, other side. Always you just breathe normally, you just grunt through it. My concern is that you would hold your breath. Don't hold your breath as the exercises get harder. Don't Valsalva, it's called. Just breathe normally. You want to take a test first? Out you go. Okay. Come back. Do you need to readjust? The challenge is greater when the starting position has your side, the lateral side of your trunk, free, not touching the ball. Ten times, maybe? Give it a try. We go out and in and two and in plank three and in and out and you know you're allowed to curse out and in actually what we end up doing mostly in beginner classes is laughing it just gets so hilarious and if the ball gets away from you, you just start again absolutely Two more. You often have to kind of re-grab your ball. Last one. Oh, and in. Okay. Oh, and a tip. Keep your ball clean and the floor space where you're working clean. If you have dust on the floor and dust on the ball, they just slide on each other. You know those little Swiffer cloths? They work great on the ball or just a damp cloth. It's important to keep it spiffy clean though. Okay, hamstring curls. The best hamstring work I have ever seen, even in the gym. Get to start lying down. That's good. <laughs> Palms out to the side, arms out. And just put your heels up on the ball. And from here, push up into a plank so your hips go up. Now, if you wanna just stay here if, to get comfortable balancing on the ball, you can stay here, but to make it a hamstring exercise, you curl your heels in and back out. Now there is an easier version, uh, it, but it's so much easier is the problem, and it is this, keeping the butt low as opposed to bringing it up high. I'd like to see you bring it up high if you possibly can. Just do what, just do what you can manage. Ready? Hamstring curls, up and up and down and down. Now, if you feel comfortable here balancing, you can raise your arms up and that makes the balance more difficult. Up, up down, down, up and up and down, down, up. Yep, it's definitely more a challenge for balance with your hands up. And down, up, and last one, and up. Stay in your bridge, stay in your bridge. Okay, now slowly lower your pelvis to the floor. We can make these more challenging. If you want these to be more difficult for your hamstrings, not necessarily for balance, keep your hands on the floor this time. Raise up into the same position, but now you're gonna lift one leg straight up. So they become single leg hamstring curls. Okay, so we're gonna do another set of 10, five a leg, or if you're using double legs, 10 with double legs. I want you to try and press that foot straight up. Don't let it come toward your head. Ready? We try up, up, 
down, down, two. Now these are uh, a lot harder. Three, a lot harder, just raw strength. Up and down. Last one on this side. If you're using single legs, go back to your bridge. Don't go back to the floor. Lift the other leg. Ready. Curl up, back, down. Up and up. So palms on the floor here. If you know of anyone who does this without their arms on the floor, I'd like to hear from them. Last one, last one, we're done. Yay, go back to your bridge. Now, lower your pelvis down. Good. Oh, we deserve a stretch. That is such hard work, we deserve a stretch. Find a good, clear spot on your wall and we'll stretch there. We just worked our hamstrings, so now let's stretch them. Get your ball against the wall, and you're just gonna push the ball up and hold it up there with your feet. With straight legs here, if that's not enough stretch for you, you can put one leg down and just move your body closer to the wall. That's gonna create a greater stretch in the back of this leg. That's very nice. And if you get real close to the wall, it can be very intense. <laughs> yep. Okay, so we want one leg at a time here. One leg at a time, stretching out your hamstring. You know, the thing I like about this hamstring stretch is that you're not having to pull on your limb like we saw. The so rest often. of your body can just relax. If you want to make this stretch into a glute stretch as well, just cross your foot over in front. Now that, look, that ankle has to come well beyond your center line. Your center line being your nose. If it's it, out here. It's out here, yeah. It's not stretching. So way over there and as low as you can comfortably tolerate. I love this stretch. Other hamstring? Put both feet back up. Lose one. Now you might have to adjust here because usually one hamstring is tighter than the other. Yep. We're never the same on both sides. So move in or move out to adjust. Stretching back here. It's just such a pleasure after you work your hamstrings as intensely as we just did to take this moment to stretch them out. Cross over and in front to get your glutes. I remember that your foot has to be well beyond the center line. Okay, we're gonna challenge the upper body with push-ups, tricep push-ups. So let the ball fall to the floor from your knees. Tricep push-ups, you wanna have your arms just about shoulder width apart, not too much wider, right here. Your straight plank with your hips forward and your elbows come straight down, almost brushing the side of your body, not out here, here. So that's a very challenging push-up. And it's a real temptation to let your back arch as you go down there. So bring those hips forward and keep your trunk as a rigid plank of wood. Ready? We go. Down, down, up, up, down, and down, and up, and up. To make sure down, that your neck is in neutral, and up. your chin should not be reaching out to touch the ball first. Your chest should touch the ball on your way down. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> Just get as close as you can. You don't have to go all the way down to work your triceps. No, Last you don't. Last one. Whew. And I don't. <laughs> right here, that's where you're gonna feel it. And, and I feel it in my belly. Your is my, core is working as well. As my core contracts. Curls, let's do forward curls. I love these curls. Sit on your ball with your toes against the wall. So your legs are straight, your toes are at the wall. Now, just roll out. Put your feet up on the wall, your hands on the floor. Are you there? Roll on until your legs are straight. So, put two fingers from each hand 
behind your head. Don't crank your head forward. Keep your head in neutral and try and just keep your gaze at about your knees. And we just curl up, down, and like down. like mini curls. Yeah. We're going to go faster. Try. Up, 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 up. So your hip flexors in your legs are pretty much disabled here. So this is pretty pure rectus flexion with your rectus abdominis. And we could do a whole bunch of these because it's such a small range of motion. It's a small range of motion, but it's still good work. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Oh my goodness. Now listen, put your hands down and bend your knees. Just roll out terra firma. Okay, sideline bridge. Xana's got the hard one. Okay, this version, you're gonna lie down so that one of your forearms is flat on the ground, fingers spread out for balance. Then put your bottom leg up first and you're gonna stack your feet one on top of the other. Use your other hand to help balance you as you push up into a straight sideways plank. I, however, have the baby boomer version. And in my version, which is considerably easier, you don't stack your feet. You have both ankles on the ball, one in front of the other. Use this hand to push up. If you don't need this hand, get rid of it and just pray that you can stay there. Xana's version gets really tough. Now if you want to add to this, make sure that you keep your hips lifted here and you can make this abduction, abduction work on your leg as well. So those outside thigh muscles on that leg are working very hard. I think it's an audition to the Cirque du Soleil myself. Very tough measure. One more, one more. Good. And lower down slowly. Put your, put your hand. hand in front. Other side. So I'm using my muscles isometrically to hold that bridge. And Xana's trunk muscles are working isometrically. But as she lifts that leg, that's an isotonic maneuver. So the, the, the muscles are moving through their range of motion. Ooh, if you're doing these with me, we're almost there. You're welcome to stop and rest. Don't corrupt the technique. Last Just one, last rest. one. Put your hand out in front and lower down. Well, you're my hero for getting through those. <laughs> I don't even know how you do it. It's so tough. It's just experience, that's all. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, it's not that I'm not trying, I'm just not there yet. Okay, we're gonna end with a restful stretch. We've done all this chest work. Just squat against your ball and roll out so that the ball becomes a pillow, so that you're comfortable. Your glutes are working a bit here to keep you up. And now, oh, just flop open. Is that finally we're done? Isn't that a pleasure to just let this shoulder just girl. walk back and forth? And get a little bit more on each side. Yeah, you deserve that pec stretch. We we we've worked the the chest here. Well, good on you. You stay on the ball now, won't you? Hang in there.